Yes, Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, I tell you, what a constant companion. He's always with me. He's in with me in the good times and in the not so good times. And you know, we all have them. But we're in a season of prayer and we're watching God move by his spirit. Today's program is gonna bring you in a little closer to having a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're fasting right now, we're praying, and we're giving. And God is transforming our lives, every one of us, from our pastors right down to our workers in the nursery, our little children, our intermediates, all of our teenagers being transformed. They're coming out every night and praying and waving their hands to the Lord and worshiping God. Our church is being transformed. You'll feel it when you see this program today. We're worshiping God. We're having such a great time of, of ministering one to another. And we're feeling the blessing of the Lord. You need a blessing? Watch this program. Before we go into the program, we've got Shabbat. And they're going to be worshiping. I worship you. They're going to worship the Lord. Join them as they worship the King. We'll be back in a while. worship the Lord.
been tough, it's been long, it's been hard, but you know what? I see, I see victory. How about you this morning? Such a beautiful incense of worship that has gone up today. Your worship, your worship is very, very important. It's an incense up into the nostrils of God. I was reading this week about how the thousands upon thousands of sacrifices that went up before the Lord on the Day of Atonement. How many know the Day of Atonement is a holiday that comes once a year, even today. They don't observe it the way they did in the Old Testament. But you talk about thousands upon thousands of animals being slaughtered, cut up, and placed up on this great altar. Now, if you will allow your imagination to consider this, these priests had a bloody, disgusting job. They were dealing with blood. If you could think about it, they had blood all over them, blood all over their hands, Blood, blood, blood. But there were those that brought incense, frankincense and myrrh. And they would get the hot coals, 
put it in the container and put incense on it, and it brought a scent to the sacrifice. Now, there's nothing as smelly as blood, animal blood, or, or any kind of, of uh, sacrifice, meat, the stench. We're talking about thousands upon thousands that had to be sacrificed. But the best thing was, yes, the blood was given up, the animal was burned, but the incense, I could see the priests saying, let me have a whiff of that, please. Have you ever been in a room that smells ugly and you just get that little Lysol and spray it around and the room changes? Well, I want you to picture that, Ron. The incense of your worship goes up into the nostrils of God and changes the scent of sin. Do you hear me? It changes the scent of sin. And so day after day, on these last seven days, every night, we have come together and we've gotten our lanterns of incense through our worship. We've come together and we've agreed that our God is able. And we've walked up and down these aisles and up on these platforms at the demarcations with our, our scent, our incense of worship. And God has showed up. How many know that God shows up when we worship him? He shows up, he shows up, he shows up. This time is a sacred time. It's a time when God wants to do something in this chaotic world that we're living in. It's chaotic. There is no resolve, there never will be. We claim peace, peace, peace is not coming. But the righteous will stand. Do you hear me? How many righteous do we have in this house this morning? We stand in his righteousness. And we will stand, though bombs and rockets, I showed you two weeks ago, what the children of Israel are raised to do. When they hear the rockets and they deal with it every single day, those teachers gave them a song, boom, boom, boom. How many remember that song? They're teaching the children. This is our atmosphere now. When you hear it, don't fear. Boom, boom, boom. We'll go under the desk. You're going to be all right. There's no guarantee that they're going to be all right outside of God. But they get them distracted with the rockets. How would you like, parents, as you send your kids to school this week, to think that rockets might take down their school? That's what they live with every day. And it's the effectual, fervent prayer of we people here who believe in Israel that are praying and guarding and bringing confusion to the camp of the enemy. Do you believe that? I believe my prayer is bringing confusion to the camp of the enemy. And every night we pray for Israel. Hallelujah. Now, you have to understand that the church was praying, like we've prayed here every night. We've come together, beautiful turnout. Coming here, praying, demarcations, touching those little sheets that you filled out for your prayer needs. Somebody's praying for you. If you put in a request, somebody's praying for you every night from seven to eight. So they prayed and prayed and prayed, and all of a sudden, Peter knocks on the door where they were praying. And Rhoda answered, and she didn't open the door. She ran back. She was astounded that they let him go. Has anything changed today? Astounded. We pray and we pray, and when it happens, what happens to us? We're astounded. And what does the Holy Spirit say? Well, I have a, a, a request here. Isn't this what you asked for? Well, I've given it to you. Do you understand? Praying brings results. Say praying brings results each and every time. Jesus Christ has not changed. He has not grown old, and neither is his power waning. He is the same yesterday, today, 
<clears throat> Say it. Yesterday. Today and forever. Say it again. Yesterday, <clears throat> today, and forever. Isaiah 45, 28. I want us to read this together, all of us. Isaiah 45, 28. Hallelujah. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. That came from the mouth of the prophet. You've got to know it beyond a shadow of a doubt that your God is able. My God is able. You're dealing with a surmountable, some of you such a surmountable uh, job before you. You've got things you've got to take care of on this side of your life and this side of your life. You've got to start declaring right in the furnace as the three Hebrew boys did. My God is able. My God is able. Say it. You'll believe in it. Come on. You believe it. From the den of lions, you could hear Daniel calmly say, don't worry about it, king. My God, who I serve, is able. you got to be convinced. The hour is getting darker and darker. You're going to have to face different situations in your life that are not skipping down a yellow brick road. You're going to have to be programmed to respond immediately. I know my God is able. I know my God is able. I know my God. How do you know your God is able? Because you have a testimony under your arm. How many have been delivered by the power of God? How many have been saved and sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ? How many of you have been healed by the might and power of Jesus? Well, that gives you the right, the justification to say, I know my God is able. Tell your neighbor on your right, I know. Tell the one on your left. I know, 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 I know. I know, I know, I know. Ephesians 3.20 tells us. Ephesians 3.20 tells us. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Come on. Now to him who is able. What are we saying here? My God is able to do exceedingly above what I'm asking for. Not just what I'm asking for, but exceedingly above what I'm, how many are ready for the exceedingly above? Well, God's promised us right now in this 14 day fast, I'm ready to do exceedingly above what you've got written on that paper. That miracle, I wanna tell somebody, is a piece of cake from mighty God. He wants to do exceedingly above what you've written on that piece of paper. Now listen, don't just agree with me this morning. Oh yes, Pat, own it. This is mine. I'm assured that my God is gonna complete the work that he began. I own this. You can't, it's too late for you to tell me, I'm not gonna make it, I'm making it. It's too late for you to tell me, he doesn't heal, he healed me. It's too late for you to tell me, I'll never get back up on the horse again. I'm riding, honey, I'm riding. Do you understand that? I own that promise. You gotta own the promise of God, that you will succeed, you will flourish above and beyond what you could ask of me. Is there anybody that owns that beside me? Somebody has to own it. Come on, take it, own it. Say, I own that today. I promise that my God is able in Jesus' name. Now, God will not change his mind concerning this church. His promise is immutable. It's firmly established. Listen, I was taught by a matriarch of the faith who had non-wavering faith in a God 
who performed every time she prayed. I saw her. I watched. I was trained. See, before the word mentored came up, I was mentored. Didn't even know that word existed. But my grandmother put me under her arms and taught me in every circumstance. Didn't matter where we were. She said, let's pray. We would pray and God would move. Every time, Otis, every time. I don't remember one time that God did not answer Nana's prayer. She was hooked in. And what she was hooked into, I was drawing from. Malachi 3, 6 says, I am the Lord and I do not change. That means what was sin last year is still sin today. That means what is grace last year is still grace today. It's time for you to stop making wishes and stop making declarations and start appealing to all of heaven. Now, the difference is you become a prayer warrior. My grandmother was a warrior in prayer, which means she never took no for an answer. You had a need, it was done. Whatever the outcome was, sometimes it was not the way the script, you wrote the script, but God always prevailed. In this hour of this church, we are looking for prayer warriors who are convinced that he's an omnipotent God and he has the ability to do anything that lines up with his will. And you refuse you refuse to doubt. Refuse. I thank God that I know a handful of people that I can earnestly say, would you agree with me? And they will give me 10 sentences after that on how it's going to happen. Do you have friends like that? Or do you have folks that say, oh, I'll pray for you. But I don't know, you know. Show up the block, he lost his house. I don't know if that's going to happen to you. Say, talk to the hand, I'm out of your company. You line up with somebody, you want to get a definite poise of faith, you talk to Pastor John Cordy. That man came in town with a positive outlook and faith for this church, came up with strategies and matrices that brought us to the next level. You talk to him keep saying, it's going to happen. You're going to see. It's going to happen. Is that not so, Pastor John? A man of deep faith. Now, how did he come to be a man of deep faith? He's gone through the uglies. Anybody here gone through the uglies? Gone through the pain of a divorce? Gone through the pain of fighting cancer? Gone through the pain of falling off a roof and breaking his back in five places? Got rods going out his head and his ears and but you talk to him, you'll never hear about the rods. You'll never hear about the cancer. You, he'll, you just say, Pastor John, you know, you got it. It's done. Don't worry about it. Don't you think about it another minute. I, it's all taken care of. It can be done, and we're going to do it. And you know what? That's exactly what's happening here. Is somebody hearing me? You've got to be with people that are positive about the ability of God, the faithful, the committed ones, the prayer warriors are going to receive the increase. Hey, I trust that you've enjoyed this program today. We are a praying church. Everybody's involved in prayer with the little ones and the, and the middle school, our high schoolers, our college students. Everybody is involved with prayer in this church. And these folks have been involved in prayer and they are just embarking on a brand new term, a brand new year at their schools. And we, are, we prayed this morning that they would be protected, that they would be covered in the blood of Jesus, that angels of God be around them. And they have a, a wish list too. They want to see something exceptional happening in their lives this season. So tell me, what is it that you want to have happen this year in school? Um, more kids being saved. More kids being saved. How's that going to happen? Just going to show the light of Jesus through you? 
Okay, good. Part of Shabak. And you, Sam, tell me. When kids stop like being bullied in, in the hallways, been to class in town. Amen. You want to see the kids stop being bullies. Well, I'll tell you, Sam, with you, the size of you, I don't think those bullies <laughs> are going to mess around with you. You, you are. You are a good looking, tough, big guy. I'd want to be your friend. Thank you. <laughs> I'd want to be, wouldn't you want to be his friend in school? Yes. Good. Well, you shine with Jesus in you, and these will get out of your way. And what about you, Rachel? What are you looking for this year? Good grades and just an opportunity to encourage someone who's feeling down. It's just simple words to just encourage people. Wonderful, wonderful, because kids really feel, they feel down sometimes. They, Especially in the, college. In college. Home life, mm -hmm. you know, home life is sometimes it's not so good, and yeah. you get an opportunity to bring life to them. What about you, sweet thing? I'm looking to excel. Excel. Yeah, study. Mm -hmm. Nothing just happens, does mm -hmm. it? Right. We, we're so excited that our kids are being trained. These are the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's of this church. These are the, our excellence. We're sending our excellence out into the world. And we've prompted them and told them what they, how they should live and no compromise. And, and we're just so proud of them. And we pray for your children, too that you would teach them. The Word of God says, train up a child in the way it should go, and when they're older, they will not depart from it. So your children, you need to cover in the blood of Jesus every day, pray on them, pray on their clothing, pray on their, their backpacks, pray on them. God will take you seriously. This is a season of prayer for this church, and we're seeing a great harvest. Now, if you would like prayer, and you want us to pray for you here, just Call the number on your screen. Call right now. And we have prayer counselors that would be glad to pray with you and bring your request into the sanctuary because when we pray at night, we're going to pray for you. It's so good to be in your house every week at 2 o'clock on Sundays. We love bringing this message to you. We trust you've been enjoying it. If you want a copy of the entire service, you only saw a little part, just call the number on your screen and we will send you absolutely free the CD and the DVD, because a lot of supernatural things happen in this church that we don't always have on film. It'll increase your faith. God bless you. Until we see you again, be blessed, highly favored, and empowered to prosper. Mm -hmm.